Hi and welcome to this video. In this video I'm introducing a library that I've been working on recently. It's called MPHX or Multiplayer Hex and it lets you make multiplayer games with Hex. Uh, so this works with any library, so it works with Hexflexel, it works with Luke's, OpenFL, any of that and it can also work just by itself in the terminal without any other libraries. What this library lets you do is basically send messages or events to other connections and have them run code. So you can do anything with this. I've uh, already made a simple example uh, with Hexflexel and you can see here it just puts a white square there but then if I open up another window then now I've got two white squares like that and you can see that they both move around and I can have as many of these open as I'd like and you can see when I move around it pops up on all of the other ones and I can see it moving like that so this library is pretty cool it's based off a library by Matt Tuttle um, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, called Hexnet and I wanted to make this a little bit easier to use for beginners. Um, so I'll show you some of the code for the Hexflexel example. All of this is on GitHub including the library. Um, if you want to use the library you can just go hexlib install uh, hxmp no, mphx, sorry, multiplayer hex. So the client code you can see in play state here um, it's fairly simple the total app um, for the client is 117 lines and the server is not that much either it's only 57 um, so it's very easy to work with and I'll run you through some of the basics of working with it so obviously you have a client and a server so a server you have one of them per game that you make generally and uh, you run that and then all of the clients connect to it and so a client is really just a player really it's just a connection from a player to the server the client sends messages from itself to the server and then the server can process them and send them to other clients if it wants to so I'll start with the client which is of course Hexflexel so just inside my play state I've got um, a map that connects a string to a player and the string is just an identifier or a username for that player. I create a what's called a client socket which is really just a client, a networking connection. Then I pass it a string which is 127.0.0.1 and that's just telling it what IP the server is running on and 8000 which is just the port. You don't really need to worry about these if you don't know what they are just set them to these values and then you can call dot connect on the client connection then here I've got um, a object called player data and this is of type player data um, and I define player data in this player class and that's just a type def if you're not sure what that is just look it up um, under hex it's basically just a small class really that's what it is based around anonymous objects so I create a new player data and this has an X value a Y value and an ID or a username for the X this code just picks a random X value um, between 0 and the width of the window the Y is the same it picks a value between 0 and the height of the window and, the, and then the ID or the username is just player plus and then the random number between 0 and 10,000. I create a new player and with this player data and this player is just a flex sprite. So the difference between a player data and a player is a player is um, of course extending from flex sprite as you can see here. And that's what we're used to doing on this channel, extending from flex sprite to add things to the screen. So this is a hex flexor class. And then in this Hexflexel class, I've got a variable data, um, which I um, can pass in in the new method. And this is just 
an object that has an X, a Y and an ID. The reason we have a player data and a player separate rather than together is because player data is a small object that can be sent quickly over the network. For example, we don't really need to send you know, the graphic that we made for this sprite over the network. Uh, we only need to send the things that are changed, um, which is the position, so the X and the Y, and also the ID. So we create that for our player, so this specific connections player, or this client's player. Um, then we pass that into that flex sprite I was talking about. Then we put it into a flex group, which is all players. And then we set players, um, the ID to be the player. And so this is um, referring to this map here. Um, so a map just connects this string or the username to a player. So that if we have a username, we always know what player it is. Now this is where the interesting stuff starts to happen. This is where my library comes into play. So um, once you've made the client socket and you've set everything up up here, you can actually send messages or events. So here I'm just sending a join event and you can see on the server that I'm actually listening to when the client sends a join event. I'll come back to that later. But basically I'm sending a join event, so saying, hey, I'm a new player, add me to the game, and I'm sending the player data. Not the player, which is the flex sprite, the player data, which just contains the X, the Y, and the username. So once we send that to the server, I'll jump over the, to the service code now. Um, similar things going on here. We've got a map that connects a connection, which is something specific to mp.hx, mphx, sorry. And that's just a client, and it connects a client's connection to a player. And here, a player is only um, under this type def of X, Y, and ID, because um, we wouldn't need flex bytes. There's no hex flex or code on the server, because the server's just processing the messages and then sending them off to different clients. So we have a map, and then we initialize it, and here we have a server, so 127.0.0.1 and 8000. That's the same on the client. Don't worry about this if you don't know what it means. But here we listen to the join event. So basically, the server is an mphx server, and we say um, dot events dot on. So when the when any client sends join, and we pass a function. So the data could be anything, and we have access to the sender, so the specific client who sent it. And then here we just say players.set sender, um, so uh, who sent it, so that specific client here. And then we connect that connection to data. And data is, if we go back here, player data because we say send join player data so when we come over to the server data will be the player data which we had on the client we'll just send that object across the network and then um, some more mphx code we broadcast an event called new player and the data remember data is the player data that that specific um, player sent when they joined so this broadcasts to everyone on the server who's connected, so all of the players that a new player has joined. And then let's see what happens on the client when they hear about a new player. So events.on new player. So when a new player is joined, um, do this. So if the player already exists, uh, don't run the following code. Basically what this means is up here we've set in the map that a player and then we add it um, referring to the username. So when there's a new player it checks if the username's already registered and if it is it means that we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to add a new player. But if not then we do have to add a new player. So we say new player and this is a flex sprite here. This is the full player object. 
but we pass it the data and the data is just the x y and the id for that player and you'll see in the player code um, when we get past it it creates the sprite at that location um, and then it just adds it to the screen sets that player um, and that's pretty much it you don't really have to worry about this this is just syncing up the data variable and the player variable uh, now we've got the update method here so when the player presses up we send a player move event with the player's data so the x y and the username um, and we move the player up naively we just change the x and y value um, and then we send the new um, location with player move so on the server if we jump back again you'll see when a player moves um, don't worry about that code um, we say uh, get the player which is registered on the server with the x y and username and then move this where it's registered on the server and then broadcast to everyone else that a player has moved Uh, so when a player moves and the server says that someone else has moved, we get the data, so the username, the X and the Y. Um, if it's us, so if it's our player and the ID is the same as the player who's moving, then it's obviously the, us that's moving and we don't have to worry about it. Um, if that player doesn't exist, create that player. Whoa. And otherwise we just move the player to the new location and that's pretty much all of the code in the example so that's a brief one down um, I, I probably rushed that and you probably took none of that in but I hope someone got something out of that video um, I'm going to be working on this library uh, in the future I'm going back to school soon so I won't be able to work on it too much as much as I have been now but I think it's in a pretty good state and you can make some pretty decent games with it. Um, and that's all I've got to say. Thank you for watching.